So typically every Friday morning, I like to clean my whole entire apartment down and prepare for Shabbat. Um, I won't be uh, lighting the candles here, here. I'll be going to my first real Shabbat dinner. So I figured I would get everything clean because you know, tomorrow is the big day. And for those of you who don't know tomorrow, I am meeting my rabbi for the first time. And it also is my 29th birthday. So I think it's time, like look how crazy my apartment looks. <laughs> It needs to be cleaned. So I figured I would do a nice deep cleaning and do a little voiceover. And it's also kind of relaxing to see people clean. <laughs> so let's get to it. Let's start cleaning. So I grew up in Long Island. And right now I currently live alone in a one bedroom apartment out in Queens, New York. And I can say I love it. I love living alone. I grew up in a large, 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 large family, and I never had privacy. And that was one of my biggest concerns in adulthood, was trying to figure out life on my own without being dependent on others. I despised it. I knew that I wanted to start taking my conversion seriously, and I wasn't gonna be able to do that living with other people. I wasn't able, I, would, I wouldn't be able to practice keeping kosher. I, it, just, it just wouldn't work out. So I found this awesome apartment and I am so, so happy about it. Living alone is not bad and I am not married. I don't have children yet. And I'm, I'm happy that life worked out this way because I am learning things about myself that I wouldn't have been able to learn had I never took the chance, took, this, took the step, the brave step, step to take full responsibility of my life. So I was born into a family of 10, I guess. I have seven siblings, six, six girls, two boys, so I have five sisters and two brothers. And my parents, who are both in their 60s, immigrated here from Haiti. And they raised us all as religious Haitian Christians. Growing up, I remember my mom not playing around when it came to church. We would have to be up every Sunday, and when I was younger, I would go to church with her probably every Tuesday and Friday, whenever, whenever I can. I just liked to be around my mom, and my mom was right, and I was a kid, so I did whatever my mom said. And we would go to church always, and some of my most favorite memories were in church. My first love was in church. My, like some of my very close friends that I'm so close with today was in church. I, um, I saw, I've, I've seen so many things and been around so many people because of church, got to know so many different connections, got to know God because of church. Um, and some of the questions that go through my mind is, Am I going to have to eliminate all these people from my life because I'm changing religion? And I'm like, no, I would never cancel my parents. <laughs> They're my parents. They're the reason why I'm here. And a part of Judaism is, you know, you obey your parents and you appreciate your parents. And without them, I, I can't even imagine how my life would be or if I would even have a life I wouldn't even be here so getting more about them uh, my parents have been married almost 38 years or 39 years almost 40 wow can you imagine being with someone that long <laughs> and my parents have been through ups and downs I remember crazy fights I remember crazy laughter I remember 
tears. I remember joy. I, but one thing that always stayed constant was their religion. And they've always been on each other's team. They've always been team players and did what they had to do to provide for their eight children. And my mother is still doing that till to, still to this day, so is my father. Their children will come first before them, before anything. And I saw that growing up. And one of the main reasons why was because my, my parents are religious. Around the age of maybe 15 or 16, I started to disconnect myself from religion altogether. I honestly hated it. I hated going to church. I hated being forced to go to church. I hated being forced to wear skirts and to, to talk about marriage all the time. And I just, I just hated it. And then I started to branch, branch out into different environments that I had no business being. That my mother, if she knew some of the things I was doing, she would be blown away. Because I, even though I listened to my mother, I was very secretive. I was extremely quiet, but it would come off shy. But when I wasn't home, I was out partying, drinking. I was out doing things with friends. I, you know, sometimes I snuck boys in, sometimes I snuck boys out. Like I was a crazy person who just rebelled completely. And the rebellion lasted years. And during that time, during the great Esther rebellion, I was probably the most depressed I've, I ever was. So maybe let's see teens to about early 20s. I was lost in school. I was in toxic relationships. I wasn't smart financially. I had, was obsessed with social media. I was obsessed with my body. I was I wasn't educated at all. I, I thought I was smart. My attitude was poor. I my language like was poor. Like everything about me was low, low standard. And I was continuously comparing myself to others, low self-esteem. It was some of the, the most depressing moments in my life. The one thing that wasn't in my life was Hashem. And I, I saw it every time I would see my mother, she would always say like, you know, why are you doing this? When I got, a, I got a bunch of tattoos that I regret each and every one of them, but they're a part of my journey, so it's fine. Um, she, she looked at me and was just like, you could tell she was disappointed because I was the one who actually was going to church all the time, was, was doing all these things. And here I am rebelling drastically across the board, doing everything, drinking, tattoos, bad, poor relationships, coming in, going out, you know, not going to school, name it, that's where I was. And it didn't hit me till about a few years ago, maybe around 25, 23, 24, maybe around that time, I started to analyze my life and realize, oh my God, I am nowhere near where I wanna be. And the one thing, I, I just went back to my childhood. I was like, that was the happiest time in my life was when I had God in it, hands down, hands down. And I'm like, oh my God, I should have married that church boy. Oh my God, I should have stayed friends with all of them. I should have done this, I should have done that. But I was like, you know, I can't change the past. I can only move forward. And I decided to work on myself spiritually. And that's when I started to work at the spa I work now, which exposed me more to Judaism. And I, I got so curious and fascinated with it that I just started to look more and more because what it was doing is it was bringing me back to my childhood, bringing me back to the fundamentals that my mother inculcated in me when I was just, what, five, six years old. 
my mother always spoke about modesty, always spoke about the importance of being a wife, spoke about education, spoke about the importance of reading, the importance of the house, my role as a woman. And hearing all this in Judaism, I was like, oh my God, I think I found what I've been missing in my life. And that day was just an awakening, awakening and that's kind of where I'm at now is I'm continuing to explore and learn but most of all Judaism has helped me appreciate my parents in a way that I haven't in a, it's inestimable how much I appreciate them now because I look at some of the people I know in my life that are going through something difficult or having a tough time adjusting to some either tragic or, or minor events in their life that may made something inconvenient for them. And I look at them and they just don't know what to do. They don't know who to turn to. They don't know anything about prayer. They don't know anything about Hashem. They, they, they are just miserable trying to find answers as to why they don't feel whole or why they they feel so empty and I am grateful that that part of me was dormant for a while but now it's it's awakening and of course this has to do with me getting older me becoming wiser and uh, me educating myself but I'm glad that it's happening and I'm glad you guys are on this journey with me because I may live alone but I'm not alone I have so much support it's crazy I, I didn't think that many people would have my back through this I guess I was just afraid to come out and just be real but talking more about this process has definitely helped so today at the Shabbat dinner I'm excited and nervous but more more ready to absorb all the information that's gonna be thrown at me and I am so grateful to have met this rabbi met uh, and he connected me to this woman who's going to navigate me through this process and just make me the best Jew I can be. So this is from me to Jew. <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoy how clean my apartment is, is now. And I usually like to make it very clean and presentable on Shabbat because it is such a beautiful time to, to, to know that we have gone through another week and we are still here and we are still healthy and we are still living and I am thankful to have to go into my 29th years and have 28 years of life and all of my siblings are living my parents are still living and I I have everything I've ever wanted I have everything I've ever needed and that's that's all you, that's what life is about